What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. Family, I have to give this warning, this word of alert or word of wisdom or caution. Uh, you know, having this YouTube channel has been a blessing and almost a curse to me. You know, when you have thousands of people who watch your videos, I think I last I looked, it was 8.4 million people have seen my videos since I've started. And I've received thousands of emails. For those who are privileged, who's got my phone number, uh, they will WhatsApp me or call me. I've had to block many of them uh, because I don't like being inundated with links and other information and stuff but for the people here on the ground my Tanzanian people who are very well trust by helping you I'm getting information that's very concerning and I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna start with this first subject and I'm, I'm because it's about three things I need to bring to your attention no matter what country you come in, you best throw out your mentality, your whole schools of thoughts, how business is gonna be done here as usual. The people is gonna be same, be down, be cool, or you can skim and scam and get over on people. You better wake up and leave all that behind you. Your old ways, you're gonna have to deal with. Because I'm sad to say I'm getting these calls from those here that I trust, that I'm trying to connect us with to make your transition better and easier. And I don't like the phone calls I'm getting when people come in here and effing everything up. It pisses me off that we got ignorant people who think they could do the same thing have the same behaviors coming here to Tanzania. Now, let me just calm down a little because when you try to help people and my name is on the line, my reputation is on the line, that you got some who just ain't got the right intellect, the right smartness to at least come as a stranger, a tourist, a newbie in a country you know nothing about, but you want to bring your same behaviors. What am I talking about? Go black. Come on. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> That's what most people are like. Come on. Get to it. Let me start with this first one. There's many people coming from around different, from around the globe, from different countries coming here into Africa. And there are people, of course, I understand, you know, we were conditioned in the countries that we were in. We have found how to navigate through things, you know, whether it's dealing with the law. We've, we've, we know how to, to uh, uh, talk sometimes our way out of stuff. We know how to complain, bicker, murmur, drama. We know all that. You gotta be cautious when you're coming into a new country and you think it's business as usual. Let me get to the first one. When we get on on the ground and you using my name because I connect you with somebody, I'm, I'm gonna just vet people. That's what I just gotta do. I'm just gonna have to vet people because if I'm connecting you with people you gotta leave that nigga shit alone. You gotta leave that back in America or whatever countries you come to. I know there are some people who just got a mentality and it takes time. But when I'm getting a call that people are trying to help you, trying to help you um, maybe get a place to live, transportation, doing work in your house, whether it's cleaning and washing clothes or whatever it might be. 
you cannot have that nigga attitude. I'm gonna say nigga. That's niggerish stuff to me. That you try to play game and get on over on somebody else. Don't wanna pay them the money. Trying to squeeze more work out of them for a little. That's that stuff you do back home. These people in Tanzania, in Ghana, in Gambia, in Sierra Leone, and all these other African countries, most of the people, can't speak for all, but most of the people having a genuine heart to try to help. Now, because I'm in Tanzania and I'm meeting these brothers and sisters, I have long talks with them and I tell them, look, not everybody coming here has money like you think. Not all the brothers and sisters who come in here have the money maybe you might think like the white people could just throw around money, leave tips and all this stuff right here. Not everybody got the means for that. You got to understand that we're coming from a place that we have some issues. We're coming from a place that money is small that you're going to have to be able to work with us and we're going to work with you. And I've been guaranteed that by some of the people I've been connected with. Yes, I see. I have to sit here and give them long stories on how we are such a sick people, but we're trying to get out of it and come here. And so I'm sharing with a sister here, trying to help people. She cuts back on the price. She's trying to go ahead and do right, extend herself. And then you got people who wants to sit here and like not pay, complain about the work, this ain't America. This ain't no crap that you just sit back in some restaurant or hotel or or dag on apartment building and every little thing that doesn't satisfy you, you're gonna, where's the manager? I want my money back over some little silly pity ass stuff. To try to get over to save yourself a penny when they making pennies here. How is it that we can get to a place and people trying to help you and you a stranger can sit back and complain about services and things that they're doing for you? I don't get it. Well, I do get it because it's ignorance. I do get it, it's ignorance. I got to tell them, look, when you get in a situation like that, call me, okay? Because see, there's people who just got that mentality. They'll go off on you. They're going to want to fight you and they're going to cause one big rush. Now we got a war on our hands. Because I guarantee you expats coming, repats, whatever you want to call yourself, who's coming into this country, you start that mess, you are going to lose. I am I guarantee you, you will lose. You had a disadvantage. They have people and family. I'm telling you, you play around with the wrong person in some of these other countries and stuff, probably to include here, you will be shark bait. Most ain't got guns, but love machetes. I'm just warning you, I've been told this. Not against you, but against, it, against anybody who's trying to rise up. And you're gonna try to cause harm and pain and not pay somebody have a disregard trying to squeeze more work out of them and after they do it then you don't want to pay them only what you think you should pay them after you made an agreement I said before not everybody needs to come to Africa some need to stay back in America some just ain't, don't get it I don't care if you middle class, upper class, or whatever money you got. Look, there are still those who still act niggerish. Act a fool, just want drama. Can't please you for nothing. Yes, I'm bringing the heat because somebody even emailed them. Why are you giving the black Americans so much? Because we need a kick in the ass. Things are done differently here. People ain't giving you drama here. People ain't trying to go ahead and just use and abuse you. You got this. That's, that's one to five percent of the people out here. Majority of the people enjoy us being here. 
But to come here and want to mess up, you got another thing coming. Point number two. If you like doing your habits of, you know, smoking, and you think you can have the same mentality coming into these African countries, like you do in the West and approach strangers and just ask them, hey, where can you cop some? I'm telling you, you are gonna get yourself in some serious heat if you get caught. Now they got that here and I don't know how it operates. I, I, me personally, I, I just don't involve myself in that. But I've heard the stories, they're looking for it, the authorities, and my thing is that um, what are the consequences if you get caught? I don't know, but I'm gonna tell you this right here. You mess around and get locked up in some of these prisons. You gonna be in a world of trouble. Don't trust everybody. You can't be open up there like that and for everybody. You better know that you know because I'm telling you, I got the phone call. And I had to shake my head and said, what in the world are we doing? You can come to a foreign land, be here not even a matter of a little time, and you are already out soliciting. We gotta keep that back there. If, I'm gonna say this right here. If you have uh, a problem with, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals and other uh, mind altering enhancements, <laughs> uh, we call it an enhancement. <laughs> if you have a problem with that, I'm telling you, you're gonna have a struggle on your hands here. I would recommend you deal with those issues before you come. Now, do what you wanna do. You, we're adults here. But I'm just giving the message out here, y'all. If I'm getting word back from the locals who know me, then who else ear is it dropping on? American Embassy won't be coming for you. You be on your own. You get caught in some illegal activities that may uh, get you locked up. You're done. You're done. And all for what? If you're here with family to hurt your family, to lead them in a situation now that they got to fight to try to get you out of jail or prison, that you're gonna alienate them and leave them out here by themselves? What are we thinking? You know, I wish the best for each and every one of us who's transitioning over here to the motherland. And I've, I've, I've asked those questions of, are drugs here? What happens if you get caught? Uh, the illegal activities, you know, these crimes and other things that you do out here. And they tell, they, each country I've been to, you gonna be up the creek. And you think you get four hots in a cot, like in America. <laughs> I've seen the jail over in Ghana. And a brother told me, he said, it is so deplorable. If I said, well, how many, how many, uh, how many, how many uh, uh, guys to a room? He said, how many? They lay on top of each other. <laughs> There's no, they packing men like sardines. 
and then they got fights and they got they got they just like any jail set jail, jail prisons they find their cliques and you being american can't speak the language and then all of a sudden who you think do, who you think they coming after don't drop the soap that's all i'm gonna tell you i don't know if that's the mentality here but you put a lot of men in a room there are some who probably just can't even they ain't got the discipline to handle themselves and just sees you as free me. Now I'm talking to adults here. And if I'm talking to adults in this kind of way, then why aren't we making adults decisions then while we're here? I'm doing this to help our family. I'm doing this to help our people. I'm doing this to help you. One bonehead bad decision. It's over. It's over. Now, let me mention this right here for my next subject that I got calls from. If you're going to do business with somebody, number one, your word should be your bond. And if anything, if they don't have the professionalism to write out a contract, basically of your wants and your dire desires, you should be writing out exactly your desires. Now I gave y'all a heads up, anytime you deal with any business here, everything is up for negotiation. Everything is. And typically the price that is given to you, I take 50% off and let's start starting going, working our way down from there. That's my experience. Take 50%. I don't care if you're going to buy clothes or buy, buy some souvenirs or whatever. You know, I mean, unless it's a place that's already got, you know, price tags on everything and all that right there. But if it's up for negotiation, you know, business is business. You got to understand that. But if you're going to do business with people, you should, your word should be your bond. You cannot have telling people that y'all come to a verbal agreement and then you want to renege on the deal. Or then you want to squeeze or wiggle your way out of paying somebody? See, that's that's that hood stuff, that hood mentality. Y'all know what word I want to use. <laughs> I think I've already used it in this video. That's what the niglets and negros do. You want to go ahead and do business with somebody, but you want to go ahead and cut corners, try to squeeze your way out of, of trying to pay them or bring down the price at the last second, not show up when you have made an agreement to show up. This is the call that I've gotten. Calls. I got a call the other day, then I'm, now I just got a call today. No, 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 no. The, the, the third call was early. What is this? What is it? Saturday, Saturday, Monday, and today. Three calls. I just can't put my name out there, my reputation out there. I have found some really beautiful people here who are sticking their necks out for us. And then people come in and mistreat them that way. We got such a hate for each other that you come here and do the same thing to the brothers and sisters here. This is a total different culture, y'all. This is a total different people. Keep my name out of your mouth if you're gonna go out and reach out to people. I don't know you. There's very few people from this day forward, I'm gonna connect with my folks that I know who can help and assist. Because I cannot be having a tarnished name running around here when I'm trying to connect and be part of the family. So think about, should you even leave the country you're in if you still got some stuff to deal with? The old games and the plots, the schemes that you're so used to, taking advantage of people, having drama, creating issues. I'm telling you, you're in a war that you will lose here. Like I said before, 
they ain't got guns here. They got machetes here in Africa. And I've been told already <laughs> how they deal with people in certain countries. You will become shark meat, shark bait. That's what you'll become. You'll be one missing in action. And so keep that in mind, family. And I hope the very best for each of you all who decides to come. But not everybody needs to come to mess it up for the rest of us. This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa.